Okay, let's move on to computed properties. So most of the time, yeah, you're going to have strings or objects or arrays. But for other times, you need a bit of computation before you render it onto the page. So that's exactly what computed properties are for. Let's review a couple examples. Maybe you just want to spit out the current date. Well, we learned about vtext, and we now know that we can use any expression within here. So I could always new up a date. And if I were to switch to the browser, sure enough, that's what we get. But what about when you need to do more complex things, like filtering data? Well, you, you don't want to try to force that into the expression here. It gets kind of messy. All right, why don't we uh, review two examples here? We'll start with one in the documentation, just to get your feet wet, and then we'll review the concept of filtering tasks or names or any data set. Why don't we use the mustache syntax here? And all I want to do is spit out the message to start. And if I come down, you'll see I already have one called Hello World. So if we give this a refresh, sure enough, we get that. But now we want to reverse it, the basic 101 example. Well, yeah, it's true. We could do something like this. We could say split it into an array of every character and then reverse that array and then join it back together. And this would work. So if I give it a refresh, there we go. But once again, this gets kind of messy and it doesn't really describe what we're trying to do. What is this? It is a reversed message. So we could always just say reversed message. But now if we run it, we don't get anything, right? And then the console, it'll let us know that it doesn't know what reversed message is. All right, let's define a computed property now. A reversed message is what? It is just this in reverse. Return, once again, this.message.split.reverse.join. And we now have our computed property. So if we come back and give it a refresh, once again, it's working. And trust me, you're going to get a lot of use out of computed properties. Really nice. But what about something more practical? What about the situation where you have a collection of tasks, just to be generic? Now, each task consists of a description, like go to the store, and a indication of whether it's completed or not. So let me fast forward and create a handful of these. Okay, there we go. So an array of tasks, and notice some of them have been completed and some of them have not. Okay, so we want to render these on the page. We can get rid of our old example here, and then we could just say within an unordered list, we can say li. We learned about the v4 directive, so I could just say for each task in tasks, then we're going to spit out what? Well, the description. So that means we could say spit out task.description. Okay, so now if we give this a refresh, sure enough, we have a collection of all tasks, and we'll give that a heading. However, what if we want to filter these to a subset of tasks? Like, I want to see only my completed tasks. Okay, well, we could do a couple things here. One, we could use a conditional, which you haven't learned about yet. We could use the VF directive, and there's also a VELSE directive. Anyways, we could say, I want to render this list item only if the task.completed property is set to true. Now, if we come back and give that a refresh, we only have two tasks that have been completed, this one and this one. So sure enough, that works. But once again, uh, it's, it's kind of messy. It's not overly clear. And I don't think we're getting any caching out of the box there. So instead, once again, we can use a computed property. Let's do this. We're going to bring this back to all of our tasks. And then we're going to create a new one here. Why don't we call this incomplete tasks? Now, I'm not going to filter through my full collection of tasks. I'm going to filter through anything I want to call it, incomplete tasks. All right, once again, if we give this a refresh, we don't see anything. And if I open up Chrome, once again, view will let us know. It has no idea what that is. All right, so we set this up. We have a new computed property called incomplete tasks. And what is that? It's just a filtered version of this. So I could say return this.tasks.filter. And for each one, I only want the ones that have a completed status set to false. So we could say not task.completed. And again, this is the ES6 or the ES2015 syntax. If you're not familiar with that, definitely learn it. Uh, I cover that here at Laracast. Otherwise, you can just do something like this. And that's the equivalent. Okay, but anyways, I think this should do the trick. So if I come back and give this a refresh, now we can see all of the tasks 
as well as those that have not been completed yet. And there are four. So remember a couple of things. One, if this doesn't change, it's going to be cached, which means you're not going to continue hitting the logic in this function. It'll just immediately return. But also, it's reactive. It's a computed property, so it's still fully reactive. So that means if we marked one of these completed ones as incomplete, it should automatically update in the DOM. Let's try it out. We have app.tasks, right? And let's see, the very first one is completed, right? So that means if I set its completed status to false, shouldn't we immediately see it show up here? Let's try it out. App.tasks, give me the first one, and I'm gonna set its completed status to false. And when I run this, we should see go to the store, jump down here. There we go. So now, yeah, this should really be getting you excited, how dynamic and how easy this is. So what I want you to start thinking about is continuing with this task app idea. Now imagine how easy it would be to have a list of tasks and maybe a little button to check them off. And as you do it, it should automatically update your other lists. Maybe you have three, all tasks, incomplete, and complete. And based upon how you click a button, it should dynamically update each of those lists. Why don't you play around with that, and then we'll move on to the next episode.